Hi everyone, on this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at drugs that inhibit platelets. And I know you've come in contact with a couple of these before, so hopefully this will help either refresh your memory or help you to understand primarily, as it did me when I first went over this, how we affect platelets with our antiplatelet. Now I do recommend going back and watching the primary clotting video as it gives the sequence of events of primary clotting, but if you already feel comfortable with that, we can kind of jump right in. So as you can see, we have our platelet here, and we have cyclooxygenase, or COX, which makes TXA2. We have ADP. We have fibrinogen, which we know is cleaved to fibrin by thrombin in the blood. And we have von Willebrand factor inside. Now, each of these molecules may interact with various receptors on our platelet, and we're going to take a look at how they interact and what the drugs that we use do and how they interact with these receptors on the platelet. So we're going to start off with the most common one you see, and this is going to be aspirin. ASA as you're going to see it. And aspirin is an irreversible COX inhibitor. I'm going to go ahead and draw this right over here. Irreversible COX inhibitor. What this means is that so long as you had a dose of aspirin, your platelets are irreversibly unable to produce thromboxane A2. And TXA's 2 job is to recruit more platelets and increase production. And so if you can't do that, it's very hard to then go ahead and make your primary clot. Now, what this also means, the fact that it's irreversible, is that we have to look for how long it takes for the drug to wear off. And even though it only has a half-life of 15 minutes, because it's irreversible once it's bound to its receptor, you have to wait until the platelet dies and is turned over. And platelets have a life turnover rate of about eight to nine days. That being said, most people now do encourage that people continue or patients continue their aspirin even perioperatively as the bleeding is not really clinically significant on or off of it. The next drug we're going to go ahead and take a look at, or drugs rather, are clopidogrel, which is Plavix, and Ticagrelor. I apologize for my spelling and drawing, which is Brillinta. And these are P2Y12 inhibitors. And as we remember from our last video, P2Y12 is responsible for binding ADP in order to go ahead and expose the G2B3A receptor. But Plavix and Berlinta, clopidogrel and, and ticagrelor prevent the, uh, the ADP molecule from binding to the P2Y12 receptor, which prevents the G2 GP2B3A receptor from being put out on the surface of the platelet and therefore preventing any further cross-linking with fibrin of platelets. Now, it should be known outside of something that we'll discuss in later videos on stents and when you should or shouldn't stop your dual antiplatelet therapy. Patients on aspirin or Plavix, that I apologize, Plavix or Berlinta, or plan to have surgery, given that they're allowed to stop their dual antiplatelet therapy, dual antiplatelet therapy is usually aspirin and one of these two drugs, should be off for five days before surgery, because staying on it, unless it's an emergent case, can cause increased rates of transfusions and ongoing bleeding. And I'll just write down here, this is our P2Y, sorry, P2Y12 inhibitors. Now, thirdly, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our GP2B3 a blockers. And these come in the flavor of integralin 
which the common name for, I can't actually pronounce it, but it's spelled E-P-T-I-F-Eptifibatide and Ebsiximab, which you may have heard of as well, which is our monoclonal antibody. Reapro. And what these drugs do is they block our GP2B3A receptor. And as we remember, hopefully, our fibrin molecules are going to go ahead and bind there and allow for cross-linking between our platelet molecules. And so by blocking our GP2B3A receptor, we're able to prevent fibrin cross-linking between platelets. Now, integralin is an interesting drug because it's titratable, and patients can be on it up to six hours before their surgery. Six hours before surgery. I apologize for that. This is computers dying. And the last thing I'll mention here is a drug called and fibotide. And this is a new drug that is being worked on now. It's a derivative of snake venom. And as we remember before from our previous video, GP1B interacts, I apologize, GP, yeah, 1B interacts with our von Willebrand factor in order to change the conformational shape of our platelet, increase surface area, and release all these molecules inside it. And what this drug is supposed to do, and what they're working on is a new target, is, let me use the gray for this, is its goal is to block this interaction here between glycoprotein 1B and von Willebrand factor as a way to prevent further clotting. But it's still under testing. So in summary, we have aspirin, we have clopidogrel and berlinta, Aspirin and Plavix, aspirin and Belinta are usually our dual antiplatelet therapy. We have our Integralin and our Abciximab and our new novel agent, Amphibotide. And these are the various mechanisms by which we inhibit platelet function. Most commonly, you're going to see these in patients with recent strokes or patients with cardiac stents of some sort or carotid stents or other blood vessel stents that we don't want to clot off. That's all for drugs that inhibit platelets. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to write to us via our Contact Us page. If you're interested in getting involved or want to submit content, please feel free to as well. Otherwise, check in for our next video.